So you can't see it. You can't feel it. You can feel it. Oh, can you see it? No. You can feel it. Oh, when you're blowing it out. You're smart, though. Let me tell you something about air. About Jesus. When Jesus was getting ready to go up to heaven, he said he breathed on them and received the Holy Spirit. And it says they simply had to receive him and like breath being drawn into lungs, breathe in. The Spirit was available to anyone who had the urge to inhale. It was like the Holy Spirit was available to anybody that would breathe in. Wow, wow. So here, we're going to do a little song about breathing in. Do you know when I used to work in a hospital, do you know what I used to do? I used to work with people that couldn't breathe. People that had emphysema and had bronchitis and asthma. And I used to teach them how to breathe a certain way. That they had to breathe in through their nose and blow out through their lips to see it. And a certain way they had to do that because they had to relax their shoulders and breathe in and blow out. Well, I want you to think about this. We're going to breathe in the Holy Spirit and blow out that devil. Breathe in that Holy Spirit. Blow out that devil. Well, we're going to sing a rap song. Y'all want to sing and help me sing a rap song? I'm going to go, I'm going to be famous with this one. I've written songs, but I am going to be famous with this one. Are you ready, girls? We've got it written up here. I'm, I'm telling you now. I... We're going to learn this rap song. You ready? I'm you, not. You're not? Okay, well, I'm just... Uh, uh, huh? I want to drink go. Okay, well, we're going to go in just a second. But I, I think everybody needs to hear this song because I wrote it. I can see everybody. Like, all right, here we go. Are you ready, girls? You want to stand next to me and we'll get it going? You want to... I'll pay you a dollar to stand next to me, one on one side, one on Okay, here we go. Are y'all ready? All right. Y'all, you want to go like this? Can you go like this? You can't do that? Okay. Thank you, Lord. For, are y'all ready? Okay, sit down now. Okay, you're dancing to my song. I appreciate that. You hadn't even heard my song yet, though. Okay, here we go. You ready? Do it loud now. Thank you, Lord, for the air we breathe. Your Holy Spirit is here. We just need to believe. That's supposed to rhyme. Breathe, believe. All you need to do is accept Jesus our Lord and the Holy Spirit comes aboard. He will calm all your fears, help you through times of tears. Jesus remembers all you have to do. Breathe in slow to tell the Holy Spirit hello. Exhale out the devil each day. Focus on Jesus. He's the way. You know what that basically that said? Is when you accept Jesus, guess what comes inside of you? The Holy Spirit. And you know what you can think of? You can breathe in when you're having a problem, when you're having a sad day, or when you're just not happy, or something's going wrong. You can just say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to breathe in and get that joy and get that power that you have, and I'm going to blow out that devil. And I'm just going to have that victory. Breathe in, Holy Spirit, and do what to that devil? And that's what God gives us. He gives us the Holy Spirit inside of us, and we just can breathe that in. Every time when you breathe, you can't see the Holy Spirit. You can't feel it. It's just like the air, but you know it's in there because God said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. You missed a kid? Oh, she didn't want to come, did she? That's all right. That's all right. We got him to take over. Good job on that. Let's Good job. Come on down. All 
Our dance is over. Come on down. You're, no, I, okay, well, no, I'm not going to make you dance. I know. We're not going to dance. Come on down. We're going to pray so you can go to Bible Buddies. Good job. Good job. Come on down. One, two, three. Okay. Heavenly Father, we don't even realize our breaths that we take. It's just so simple, but we don't even pay attention to breath. But Lord, these children, if they could just remember that when they ask Jesus to come into their hearts, the Holy Spirit's there. But when we breathe in, we can just think of that Holy Spirit alive in us, and we can just blow out that devil. <sighs> Lord. And breathe in and just ask that Holy Spirit. Just give me the power over whatever we're going through. And if we're not going through anything, breathe in that joy. Help these children remember this. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Good children start this morning. Every one of us need to breathe in a big old breath of the Holy Spirit this morning and just blow the devil out and say, get behind us so we can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth today. Good to see each of you this morning. Let me share a thank you note. This is from the Telestials that were here the first of the month to sing. Thank you so much for having us. We had a wonderful time, and we look forward to having, having them back. They were, they were really good. Let me share just a few announcements with you. First of all, this afternoon from 3 to 6, we'll be receiving friends for Kenny Evans. And the funeral will be at 6. It'll be a graveside in the morning at 11. be meeting here at the, at the church and then going down to Memorial Gardens. Friday afternoon when I left Kenny's house, he said, I'll be in church Sunday. And when he passed away last Friday night, the first thing that Tom and Taryn Virginia said, we're having the funeral Sunday, whether we get it in the paper or not. Because he said he was going to church Sunday, so we're going to make sure he's in church Sunday. And he also told me that he wanted his funeral service to be a church service, not a funeral service. So with that in mind, that's the reason we're having it at six o'clock today, our regular time for worship, because we're gonna come and worship today at Kenny's service. But remember his family. There'll be no puppet practice uh, this afternoon. Remember the Bible study, not a fan meets every Thursday at uh, 12.30. Uh, also remember our Thursday night prayer time. Uh, vac vacation Bible school is just a couple of weeks away, and we still need a list of items, and they're on the table, and we still need some people to sign up. Remember the Labor of Love meets the first Tuesday of each month uh, to go do their uh, memory choir, and everybody that wants to come, come and be a part of that. And also during the month of June, uh, they're collecting uh, items for Iva's place. There's a list of items that uh, are in your bulletin. Also, the boxes of blessing for Venezuela is, is still going on, and if you'd like to give to that. And we're also having a medic blood drive on Thursday, July the 6th from 11 to 6, and it'll be in the fellowship hall. Okay. Any other announcements? Anybody else have an announcement this morning? Okay. Any other announcements? Registration forms for Bible schools out. Anything else? Well, it's good to see everybody this morning. We've got some guests with us this morning. 
Good to see you. Let me ask our church family to stand. If you're a guest, you just stay seated. In a few minutes, we're going to come and fellowship one with another. And take a visitor's card, if you would, and fill it out and drop it in the offering plate, okay?
guys sing with us. God is so good. we take up the offering. Becca uh, is, Wiggins not feeling good today. She can't even turn her head side to side. And Andrea asked that we have a prayer for, for Becca and we want to do that now. And uh, the deacons have got together and they want to take a love offering for Becca. She's not been able to work. So at the end of our service today we'll be receiving a love offering for Becca. So just remember that and pray for that. Father, before we receive the offering today, we just lift up Becca to you. She's already gone through two surgeries. and Father, we just pray that your healing hand be upon her. Father, you're her great physician. You know more about her body than anyone else. And Father, we pray that you'd heal her. But also we pray that you'd give these doctors wisdom that they might be able to do something that would just relieve her and of this pain and help her to move her neck back and forth so she can go back to work. And pray for our church as we pray for her and love her and support her. And Father, we ask now that you bless this offering that we're about to receive and bring in to your storehouse. Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of your people to give, both the tithe and the offering. Father, you're so good to us, we can never outgive you. But Father, help us to be faithful to give you the tithe today. And help us to be faithful out of the abundance of your blessings upon us to drop an offering into the offering plate today. And Father, we pray that you'd bless those that come prepared with a prepared heart to, to give as you'd have them to, to give today. Again, bless our church. Use our church in a mighty, mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
شو Well, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to look with me in Matthew chapter 14. We're going to be looking in verses 15 through 21. And we're going to be looking at a familiar passage of Scripture. It's the passage of Scripture where Jesus takes a little boy's lunch, a little bit of fish and a little bit of bread, and he feeds a multitude of people. But this morning, I don't want us to look at it about the fish and the bread and feeding a multitude of people. I want us to think about the master's hands today because whatever is put in the master's hands, he can take it and make it into what he wants it to be. And if we will take our little that we have to offer and put it in the master's hands, he will expand our usefulness to him so that we can give him more glory. Look with me in Matthew 14, verses 15 through 21. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and he brake, and he gave the loaves to his disciples and the multitude and the disciples to the multitudes. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men besides women and children. Father, thank you today that you're a miracle working God. And I just want to thank you for your hands today. Those hands that were nailed to that old rugged cross that we might be forgiven of our sins. Those hands that are sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding on our behalf. And those hands, if we would put our lives and all that we have into, He would take the little that we have to offer Him, and He'd multiply it, and we would become much more useful to Him and His kingdom. Same's true for the church. If we would take the little that we have to offer as a church, put it in the Master's hands. He could use us to do great and mighty things for Him. Father, bless us as we worship You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, of all the miracles performed by Jesus, this is the only miracle that's recorded in every one of the Gospels. This is the only miracle that's in all four of the Gospels. And a lot of people look at this miracle and say, boy, it's a miracle because Jesus took a little bit and he fed a multitude of people. But this miracle was performed or designed to teach us more than how Jesus can take a little and make a lot out of it. This miracle was designed to tell that multitude of people and all those around that Jesus was the Messiah of the Jews. This miracle was to reveal the true nature of Jesus as God in the flesh. In fact, when you think about this miracle, there's really three reasons that Jesus performed this miracle. One, Jesus performed this miracle to illustrate that He is the bread of life. He wanted the crowd to know that He was the one that was broken for sin for each and every one of us on the cross. Secondly, it was to show the Jews that one that greater than Moses had come. You see, the Jews had Moses kind of setting up on a pedestal. The Jews revered 
Moses. They believe Moses was the one who gave the Israelites bread in the wilderness. And Jesus in this uh, miracle is reminding them that it wasn't Moses that gave them bread in the wilderness, it was God. And Jesus is reminding them that now God had sent into this world the true bread, and he was that true bread. And the last thing, this miracle was to demonstrate the power of the Lord Jesus Christ over all creations. Do you realize that this miracle and one other miracle, the miracle of turning water into wine, are the only miracles where Jesus actually used his power to create. In every other miracle, the resources were there. But Jesus took the water into his hands and he blessed it and turned it into wine. He took this little boy's lunch and breast it and break it and turned it into a feast for a multitude of people. This miracle is usually used to show how the Lord can take just a little and make a whole lot out of it. You know, I don't think you and I as humans can fully understand the miraculous power of God at work. We read about these miracles, but we can't understand the miraculous work of God. But what I want to do this morning is point out that Jesus took a little amount of bread and fish and greatly expanded it, not just to feed a multitude of people, but he expanded it for greater usefulness to the people. I want to remind us this morning, church, you may feel insignificant this morning. We may feel like our church is too small and too limited to accomplish something great for the Lord. But I want us to see this morning through this passage of Scripture that anything, anything, a life, a church, anything that is placed in the Master's hands can be used of Him in a mighty, mighty way to give Him glory. And I want you to remember just what he did for this bread. He can do for me and he can do for you and he can do for this church. All you've got to do is place the little that you have in the master's hands and say, Lord, you do with it any way you see fit. I want to share with you three things this morning about the master's hands. First of all, the master took the bread and he put it in his hands. And you know the first thing that he did? He blessed that bread. It says he took the five loaves and he took the, the two fishes and then he looked up toward heaven. He looked up toward his Father in heaven and he blessed what he had in his hands. John tells us that the bread came and the fish came from a little boy in the crowd. He was the only one that come prepared. He's the only one that had a lunch. But Jesus took the bread and he took the fish and then he looked up toward heaven and he said, God, I just want to thank you for the little that we have. Now let me stop right here and say this, church. You ought to always take the time to stop and thank God for the food that he gives you. You ought to always stop and thank God for his blessings upon your life. Folks, just as Jesus blessed that fish and that bread that day, He blesses you and me every single day. Think about His blessings. Think about how He's blessed you since He saved you. Think about all the prayers that He's answered for you. Remember all the needs that you had. And you asked Him to meet those needs, and He met each and every need. Remember how He kept every promise that He made to you. Folks, His blessings are wonderful. His blessings deserve to be thanked for. Have you done that lately? Have you stopped and said, Lord, I just want to thank you for the food that I ate. I just want to thank you for the roof that I have over my head. Thank you for the clothes that I put on this morning and was able to come to church. Thank you that I was able to get in a vehicle and started it up and it actually started and I was able to come to church today. Folks, every one of us love it when the Lord is blessing us, don't we? We love it when we're on that mountaintop experience. 
You know what? All the Lord wants from you and me today in return for His blessings is just to say, Lord, we love you. Lord, we want to be obedient to you. Lord, we just want to praise you. Lord, we just want to thank you for being good. Folks, is He getting that out of your life? Do you take the time to thank Him? And after the Master took the bread and the fish in His hands, it says the second thing that He did while He had it in His hands is He broke the bread. And He took the five fishes, or the five fishes and the loaves, and He looked up toward heaven and He blessed it, and it said He broke it. After He had blessed the bread, he used those same hands that he used to lift up toward heaven and ask God to bless it. He used those same hands to break the bread. Folks, before that bread could be shared with a multitude of people, it had to be broken. I used to have a deacon down at uh, Central Baptist Church, and in his prayer he'd always pray, Lord, help me to be broken and spilled out for your glory. You know, one of the hardest truths for you and I to learn as a Christian is that before God can use us in a great and mighty way, sometimes He has to break us. Sometimes He has to hurt us. A time of brokenness always comes before a time of usefulness to God. Folks, you can see this even in the life of Jesus. You say, well, how did Jesus had to be broken? Before he could provide salvation to the world, he had to be broken on a cross for our sins. And one of the clearest examples of this truth of brokenness that we see in the Bible is in the life of a man named Job. God blessed Job. He blessed Job with so much and then God had to break him. God had to hurt him. And the Lord's purpose in breaking Job is not revealed until you get to the very last chapter of the book of Job. And it says that in the last chapter, that because Job had been broken and because he said, God, I'm going to worship you no matter what, it says that his usefulness was expanded and God got the glory. Folks, the reason for his ministry of breaking our lives sometimes is the same as it was for Job. He does it for his glory, but he always does it so that you and I can be used for a greater purpose, so that he can expand our usefulness in his kingdom's work. Folks, it's never pleasant to be broken, but the results are always worth the pain. The main lesson that he wants us to learn through brokenness is that we need to totally depend upon him. He wants our absolute dependence on him. I just want to remind you that the Lord knows just how to break you. I want to remind you this morning, he knows just exactly how to touch your life and where to touch your life to get your attention. When I was running from God and His call to the ministry, He put me on the backside of God's mountain where the only way that I could look was up. You know, I believe there are people in this service today that God wants to use. I believe there are people in this service today that God wants to expand your usefulness to Him. But He does not have your attention and He can't use you till He gets your attention. Folks, He calls out to us in a still voice. He gives us that gentle call to come and be used of Him. And if you don't listen to that still, small voice, folks, He's got a more direct way to get you to focus on Him and to pay attention to Him. And if you're in one of those breaking periods of your life right now, I want you to notice something. Where was the bread when Jesus was breaking it? It was in his hands. If you're going through a period of bro brokenness right now, do you know where you are right now? You're in the master's hands, just like that bread was. 
And when the Lord is breaking you, it's not to damage you. It's not to hurt you. The Lord is breaking you in His hands so He can prepare you to use you in a far, far greater way than He's ever used you before. And folks, listen. The bread was never closer to the Master than it was in His hands when He was breaking it. And you're never closer to the Master than when you're in His hands and He's breaking you and preparing you for usefulness to His kingdom. And I want you to see one last thing. After the Lord took that bread in His hands, after He had it in His hands, He blessed it and He broke it. And you know what He did? He shared it. He shared what God had put in His hands. The Bible says, and gave the loaves to His disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled and they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The five small loaves and two little fishes were just enough to feed one little boy. But it was put in the master's hands. What was designed to feed one little boy fed as many, we're told it could have been 25,000 people with the women and the children there. Folks, that's what the master does with the things that he blesses and breaks. That's what the master does when you put something little in his hands. He uses it in a far, far greater way than we could ever imagine. God only breaks us so that He might expand our ministry. God only breaks us so that we can become more useful to Him. And folks, when He's breaking you, when He's got you in His hands, He's doing it so He can use you so that He can get more glory and honor. If you've been blessed and broken by the Lord, then get ready. God's got something big for you, folks. If you've been placed your life in the Master's hands and He's broken you and He's prepared you, He's got a plan for your life, a usefulness for your life that's so glorious, you can't even begin to imagine what God's going to do in your life. That bread and those fish were greatly used of the Lord. But before He could use them, they had to be placed in the Master's hands. Church, listen, there are people today who need to place their lives in the hands of the Master. You said, preacher, I'm saved. But have you ever put your life in the Master's hands? Have you ever let Him be Lord of everything? Some people need to place their life in the Master's hands today so He can save their soul. He can't use you for His glory unless you're saved. There are others who have already been saved, but the Master's not in control of their lives. Put your life in the hands of the Master and say, Lord, take my little and multiply it for your glory. Trust Him to do what is right for your life, to prepare you for something great. I said, over and over and over again, I believe God's going to do something great through this church. And I still believe that. But we've got to put the church in the hands of the Master. And folks, I'm not talking about putting a building in His hands. I'm talking about the people that make up the church. We've got to put ourselves in the hands of the Master and trust Him to do what's right in my life, in your life, and in this church. And I want to challenge the church this morning. I want to challenge the church this morning to come before the Lord. And I want to challenge you to call upon <coughs> His name today and ask Him, <coughs> Lord, move in power. Move in power in this church. Move in power in my life. Lord, bless us and bless this church. Break us so that we can come to a place of total dependence upon you. <clears throat> and then, God, we're just going to step back and we're just going to watch how you use this church and how you use each and every one of us for your glory. I believe God is going to do something 
And we're just going to step back and say, wow. Do you see what God's doing? Do you see how God's at work here? I believe there's areas of ministry in this church where God is working in a mighty, mighty way. <coughs> but God wants us to put each ministry in His hands. Not in control of a person. Not in control of a committee. <coughs> but in control of the Lord Jesus Christ. And say, Lord... Thy will be done. Lord, this is yours. You do with it any way you see fit. And folks, if you and I get out of the way and let God take control, God will take us to a higher place than we've ever been before. But it all begins with the Master's hands. All we've got to do is put our little in the hands of the Master and see what He can do with our little. And if every one of us give the Lord our little, say, Lord, you do with it any way you see fit, God could take this church. And I've said it before, and I believe it with all my heart. I believe He could turn our community upside down for Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the Master's hand. And Father, right now, as we go into a time of invitation, you're standing before us with your arms outstretched, with your hands welcoming those to come unto you who are lost without Jesus. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, I pray you come this morning and ask Jesus to be your Lord and be your Savior. If you're here today and you know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, but you've never given Him total control, you've never let Him be Lord of everything that you have. Lord of your time, Lord of your money, Lord of your talents. Come today and say, Lord, I want to give you everything I have, and I want to place it in the Master's hands to do with any way you see fit. You know, I don't know how the Lord's spoken to you this morning. But if you're lost, I pray you come be saved. If you need to come rededicate your life to Jesus, I pray you do that. But I just pray we'd come today and say, Lord, take this church and use it for your glory. And by doing that, we're saying, Lord, take me. Take me. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Send me to do anything you want us to do to reach a lost and dying world for Jesus. Father, I just pray those that have ears to hear be obedient to you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing. If you need to come.